Who could forget these scenes? One month ago, a train derailed in Ohio, forced the evacuation of part of a town. Toxic chemicals sickened residents, killed thousands of fish. Yeah, I team reporter Doug Wolf takes a look at what would happen if we had a similar situation here and what the government is doing to prevent another disaster. The February 3rd derailment of 38 rail cars on a 149 car Norfolk Southern freight train in East Palestine, Ohio, has focused the nation's attention on rail safety, an incident the National Transportation Safety Board says was avoidable. This was 100% preventable. We call things accidents. There is no accident. The train was hauling hazardous materials, which included 11 tank cars with materials that ignited. Five of the tankers were carrying more than 115,000 gallons of vinyl chloride. Could we have a similar accident in Decatur? After all, Decatur's a big railroad town, and hazardous materials come through here every single day of the week. Decatur has three rail yards run by the railroads and at least two industries have switchers moving rail cars on their property. Norfolk Southern's Decatur yard is the largest flat yard in North America. We get a little bit of everything coming through that rail yard. Neil Elder is special operations chief for the Decatur Fire Department. If it's on fire, then you need to evacuate everyone up to a half a mile. Hazmat training takes place on a regular basis and at times with the assistance of major railroads. They have come down and trained us different times and sent a few of us for, for training in uh, Pueblo, Colorado. As for firefighters, no one is forced into it. They volunteer. There's no extra pay. They are all volunteers for it. They're requesting an engine, tanker, ladder truck, and any available manpower. The National Transportation Safety Board is concerned that numbered placards, which alert first responders to what's in a derailed tanker, actually melted in the Ohio fire. We have a book that will tell us by the placard on the, uh, the rail car, and also it has an ID number on it that can tell us, tell us everything, where it's been, where it's going, um, what exactly is in that car at the time. The NTSB is concerned protective aluminum housing covers on three vinyl chloride tank cars melted and possibly damaged pressure relief devices as pictured in this photo. NTSB is also inspecting track defect detectors which alerted the crew to a fire on one of the cars. A critical audible alarm message sounded instructing the crew to slow and stop the train to inspect the hot axle. We're living with standards when it comes to railroad safety, which were adequate in years gone by, but are no longer the case. I spoke with Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, who pointed to the length of trains and railroads only having two-man crews. He discussed the need for more of those defect detectors, which are currently spaced 20 miles apart. I just uh, co-signed a bill, uh, a bipartisan bill, uh, that would change that distance to 10 miles. Uh, I think we've got to have better equipment, more of it, and we've got to have a train crew ready to respond when needed. Norfolk Southern has had 20 hazmat spills in the past eight years. CEO Alan Shaw defends the company's safety record. Norfolk Southern runs a safe railroad, and it's my commitment to improve that safety. Last week, the NTSB announced a special investigation of the company's organization and safety culture. For the I-Team Indicator, Doug Wolf. WAND News. A 1974 explosion in what was then the Norfolk and Western Rail Yard indicator killed seven people. 140 were injured. 80 homes and other 600 buildings were damaged.